Welcome everyone, thank you for joining me today and thank you for tuning in. So recently I hit the 500,000 subscriber mark, pretty exciting, so I thought we could do a little Q&A and uh, I'm going to get right into the questions here and I'll link down below in the description and a pinned comment, I'll have timestamps so you can check out whatever question you want wherever it is in the video, so definitely check that out. So the first question here, any recommendations on how to learn to draw portraits? So drawing portraits, to me, it's like kind of drawing anything. You know, you can learn about anatomy and learn about drawing portraits and certain kinds of uh, proportions and things. But to me, the way that I kind of draw stuff, if you have a reference, you know, you just draw shapes, draw lines, straight lines and shapes, and just practice a lot. Get some photos or draw from life. Just, just try to practice. The more you do something, the better you're gonna get at it. Just really dig into it. All right, so next question here is, when will you start doing plain air vlogs again? So hopefully I can start doing them soon. I really want to, I really wanna get out on the weekends at least and do some plain air painting. And uh, I have a whole channel dedicated to plain air adventures, plain air blogs. So definitely check that out if you're interested in watercolor painting and seeing me paint outside. But um, yeah, hopefully I can get back to it pretty soon. It's been a while and it's way overdue. I just have. A lot of things going on, but hopefully soon. Hopefully really soon. All right, we have an interesting next question here. Uh, how to sell my art? So basically, um, you know, for me, I sell it through my website, but you have to have a way to promote it, right? You can't just put it up on your website and think it's gonna sell. So for me, um, you know, I do my YouTube videos, I do live streams, I mostly sell it through my live streams. You know, interacting with the actual people that will probably buy it or purchase it or at least know people that might want to buy it. You know, post it on Facebook, try to build a community of people, of real genuine supporters and really um, build those relationships. And that's the way to, it's the way that I sell my art, you know, so give that a shot. All right, so next question, this seems like a good one. Do your art skills help you be better at your full-time job? Have they helped in unlikely ways elsewhere? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I have, I work as a graphic designer, so they definitely transfer over. You know, the, the, the skills that I have definitely transfer over when I need to draw or do something. And also, my skills at my design job also help with my art, and they help with my YouTube channel and, and Instagram posts, things that I have to design and put out. So they're actually beneficial uh, in both ways, you know, and in unexpected ways or unlikely ways. Not really that I can think of right now, but you know, I'm sure I'm sure it's happened over the last eight to nine years. I'm sure it's happened, but uh, yeah, they definitely are complimentary. So it's kind of cool. So um, yeah. Okay, another interesting question here. Did you always know you're going to be an artist? What other career path would you choose? So this is very interesting. So I kind of knew. I mean, I didn't really know for sure. It's something when I was a kid, I thought of maybe I wanted to be an animator. You know, I was really influenced by the Disney kinds of movies and animations and stuff. I really thought it was cool. I had no idea I would I would get into it like that. I didn't know that I would be able to do it. You know, when you're a young kid, it's like you don't really think you could possibly do that. Because it's just you look up to those people and you're like, wow, it's so cool. But uh, for me, yeah, I kind of, I guess once I got to high school and then college, I kind of knew I wanted to be an artist. Um, I got into graphic design, and that's what I do as my full-time job now, currently, but you know, I'm trying to get out of it and do my art full-time. So if I didn't have art at all and I wanted to do something else, I would probably do something very different, very, very different, maybe a little different, like a geologist or a paleontologist or something with the earth, something with nature, something outdoors, but something that's about history and like looking back in time something very interesting like that. Um, it's kind of stuff I'm interested in. So I would do something like that uh, if I didn't have art. All right, so we have another question here. This one's kind of similar to the previous one, but it's a little different. So, um, what did you dream of becoming when you were a child? And what is it now that you dream of becoming? So that's very interesting, kind of seeing like, you know, the change in like 30 years of what I, Imagine so when I was a kid like I said, I thought I'd probably be an animator. I wanted to be an animator Obviously now I'm not doing animation at all not really interested in that at all. So I think now I really want to become You know just my own artist. I want to I want to go out and travel. I want to document things I, I like creating videos. I always wanted to create like 
some kind of high quality kind of documentary type of videos and stuff. I think I have a lot of different directions of things that I would really like to do. I would like to like create a series of plein air adventure videos that are very high quality, like have someone like a camera, have like a cameraman follow me around and document it. So I don't have to worry about the filming aspect of it. Just really make them look cool. Like that's kind of my dream of what I would like to do. I have a, like a cool series where I travel to different countries and make like a video or a series of videos, like episodes for each country and kind of like explore the culture, the, the, the architecture, the landscape, the pe talk to the people, get interviews and their thoughts on art and everything. Like have this whole interesting kind of videos that I've never seen happened that are intertwined with art as well, that have me painting what I'm experiencing. So kind of like a plein air experience. So um, yeah, that's what I would like to do, to be honest. Um, yeah. All right, next question. So of course we get this kind of question. Were you ever bad at art? I mean, of course, I think everyone is when they first start. You know, when I was a kid, I made a video a few months ago showing all this art or a lot of the art that I made when I was a kid that I just recently got back from my mom, if she saved, luckily. And um, yeah, it was bad. I was bad. I drew cartoons and stuff. You might not think it's that bad. It's bad compared to what I can do now, but maybe it wasn't bad for a kid. But, you know, I just, everyone has to practice. Everyone starts somewhere. And uh, yeah, it was definitely bad. Definitely bad. All right, next question. Who's your favorite artist and why? Well, that's always a tough one for me to answer. I don't really have like a particular favorite artist, really. I don't really look at much art, to be honest, nowadays. I kind of just do my own thing. I don't really look at a lot of different artists or follow a lot of different people anymore. If I had to name one guy from the past, John Singer Sargent, if I had to name one guy that's alive, contemporary, I would say Alvaro uh, Castanet, Castagnet, Spanish guy, I believe. Um, really like his approach, very loose and, and uh, expressive. I like his attitude, his bravado, his confidence. I think Sargent kind of had the same kind of thing. Um, so yeah, those are the guys I kind of like and kind of look up to, I guess, if I had to. But I, I don't really have like a favorite. Those are just kind of two big inspirations. And also Aaron Blaze when it comes to like pen and ink drawings and stuff. But uh, for paintings and watercolor, it would be uh, John Singer Sargent. He's good at drawing as well, and so is Alvaro. Alvaro, so there you go. Okay, next question. Where would you like to visit and paint? Well, that's that's very challenging. There's many places I'd like to visit and paint. Um, my, my first really, my big priority is to go to Asia. That's really what I wanna do next. I really wanna go to Asia, like Southeast Asia. So that's probably where I'm gonna head next. Eventually, you know, there's many places I wanna go, like Japan, Germany, uh, Morocco, places in the Middle East, maybe Africa as well. I want to go all over, you know, New Zealand, Australia, probably uh, Southeast Asia first, definitely. Malaysia, probably. All right, next one, here we go. Do you ever think you'll bring back your long hair? So uh, most of you, if you followed me for years, you know I had long hair at one point for like a year or two, I was growing it out and I uh, eventually just cut it off and made it this short, just got tired of it. Probably not, but I'll never, never say never, okay? Never say never. I might bring it back eventually, but in the foreseeable future, Probably not. All right, so next question here. At what point in learning art did you yourself feel demotivated and not by any external influences? That's very interesting. Also, what was the reason for the demotivation and how did you overcome it? Well, I think, I'm not sure what you mean by external influences. Not really by anybody else, but there's always influences, right? There's factors for everything. There's always external things. Everything's external, right, except for your own thoughts about things and your own feelings. So in a way, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure exactly what you mean by that. It's a pretty interesting question. And then you ask, what's the reason for the demotivation? So that's the external influence, right? So the reason. You know, a few years ago I got demotivated a few times and I, I did quit art for real for like two months and I quit my YouTube, just quit everything. And I think it was ne necessary at that time. I think I needed a break. Sometimes you, you need a break. And if you can afford to take a break like that, then, and you need it, then do it. But nowadays it's not something I would do. 
If I feel that way nowadays, I'm gonna push through it and just keep going. I'm not gonna give up, I'm not gonna quit, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna fight through that feeling and just keep creating. Because eventually you'll get it back, you'll get it back. If it's something you really love. So how did you overcome it back then? How did I overcome it and what was the reason for the demotivation? So it was really just comparing myself to others, having this doubt, feeling like I could never do it. Like I felt like, man, I'm never gonna be able to make this a business. I'm never gonna be able to get good at my art. I'm never gonna be like that person. I'm never gonna be like them and do what they're doing. And at that time I wanted to get into galleries with my paintings and stuff and I just felt like oh, I'm never gonna be able to do that and make a living the way they do. I'll never be as good as they are. And uh, I realized like, I don't wanna be like them. I don't wanna be just like them or follow their path. I wanna do something different. I wanna be better. I wanna be my own artist, be myself. So overcome it, I just realized I can't quit. I gotta keep going. So it's just this burning passion inside of me. That's how I overcame it. But I think if you just keep creating every day that you can, you're gonna overcome it, just push through it, so. We have an interesting question here. How do I find my style? Well. I would say to find your style, you forget about style. Don't worry about it. Just keep drawing, keep painting, keep creating. Whatever it is you do, just just do whatever feels natural to you. Draw the way you naturally draw. Paint the way you naturally paint. You know, look at some influences. Try to find what, what really inspires you, what influences you. But don't try to make your art look like theirs. You know, just take a few things you like from it. Take the colors or take the line work or whatever it is that inspires you the method, the way that they create it, whatever it is. Take a few little influences from it, then put all that aside and then just create your own stuff using some of those influences. Like, have that in your head, but don't like intentionally do it as much. Just create, freely create over time your style. Style it comes from many different things. I'm gonna make a whole video about this. this I'm, I'm just quickly answering this. But style is, is across a body of work. So it's, you can't just have one style for one piece of art. It's gonna, a style appears after you see many, many pieces. Don't worry about style, forget about it. It's not important. Just draw the way you draw, paint the way you paint, a style will appear. That's what you should do. Okay, where do you get your ideas for what to draw? How do you find what is best or what technique suits you? So all this is experimentation. That's really the simple answer. Everything is experimentation. I draw many, many things, and then I find, for me, what I like the best. You know, and I, and I discover, for me, it's animals. I like drawing animals. I like using pen and ink, and this was all through experimentation over many, many years. Um, another, I'm gonna make a whole video on this topic. I actually have one planned of how, to, how do you get ideas for what to draw. So using Pinterest is huge, and I'm gonna go into more depth into that in a future video, so definitely stay tuned for that one. You know, finding your technique and, and what's best and all that, experimentation, a ton of experimentation. Okay, so this next one, uh, this person asked three questions, but I'm just gonna answer the first one. What is the hardest time you have experienced? So I think for me, the hardest time I've ever experienced was when I was 15 years old, 2005, lost my house in Hurricane Katrina. I think for me, that was probably the most difficult situation in my entire life to deal with. I've never had to deal with anything like that. I lost everything I'd ever owned, lost my home, had to switch schools, move to my mom's house. Complete, everything was new. I was very depressed for many years after that. So um, that was something very difficult to deal with. But now when I look back at it, it was, it was a blessing. It was a blessing in disguise. And I, I think that happens for a lot of people with challenging situations like that. You realize it. That thing actually helps you more uh, in the long run. So I'm very grateful that it, that, that it happened. You know, it's funny to say that, but that was probably the hardest time when I was in that time. Okay, so we have a real interesting question here. Did you go to college for art? If so, do you regret it? That's very interesting. I mean, that's, like, that's a whole video in itself as well. And uh, I'll probably go into that in a different video, but quick answer here. I didn't go to school for fine arts. I went to school for graphic design. So I didn't really have, you know, I didn't really, we had some art classes, but it was also for graphic design. And it was for me getting a job for some, for another company. So I feel like for me, it was useful. Um, but I can see why people going to fine art would regret that thing because you can learn everything from books and other teachers and stuff. Um, you know, it really depends on the colleges. So I went to two different colleges. I went to a community college first for two and a half years. And then I went to a four year after that, but I, all the credits transferred, so I only went for two more years. 
and my community college, which luckily for me was mostly free because of my high school, you know, long story, but um, just because of the grades I had, it was free for me. So very cheap. That college was way better than the four year one I went to. So I learned so much more and that the instructors were so much more passionate about what they did. I learned a lot from them just about life and, and business, things that they don't teach you in school. And then when I went to the four year college, I could have taught the classes at the four year college. That's how bad it was. So I don't regret mine, but I could see why you regret yours. It's, you know, it is frustrating, but the best thing you can do is just pay off your loan, your student debt as quickly as possible if you have any and just move on. That's what I did for me. You know, that four year college when I went for two years, you know, I ended up racking up like $15,000 of debt, which isn't a lot compared to schools nowadays, but it was a lot for me. It was a lot for me and it took me like two or three years to pay it off, but I did it very quickly. Yeah, no regrets. I learned a lot. It's got me to where I am today, so I guess that's it. All right, so we have a quick one here. Will you have another drawing class? So a few months ago, if you don't know, I launched my intuitive drawing course and we had like a, an eight week kind of class session, but now I have it on my website. You can purchase anytime. It's a full drawing course, takes you from the very beginning, knowing nothing basically, to being able to really improve your drawing and learn a lot and be able to create, you know, hopefully draw many different kinds of things. Um, I am planning at the beginning of August, if the timing is right, if I can plan this in time, uh, to have a weekly Zoom drawing class once per week and uh, having people pay monthly and it's going to be cheaper per uh, week. Um, so I'm really looking into that. So I probably will do some kind of drawing class like that. But other than that, probably not another drawing class, just lesson videos on my YouTube or on my website, stuff like that. All right, what should we begin to draw or paint in order to improve watercolor plus drawing skill? And how long should we practice every day? Well, you know, that's like an impossible question to answer. You know, um, start off with simple subjects. I would even start off with small paintings. Small paintings are much easier to handle and to understand rather than something large. So start off small, you know, six by eight, eight by 10, nine by 12 inches. Start off smaller. Simple subjects, easy subjects, learn the fundamentals, learn about wet into wet, learn about creating washes, wet on dry, learn all the basic stuff, learn how to color mix. You have to learn all these fundamentals, all the drawing fundamentals as well. I have an intuitive drawing course. Um, I also have a ton of drawing videos on my YouTube channel. Go look through those drawing lessons. Just start drawing everything around you, very simple things and practice. As far as time every day, as much as you can, as much as you can put in, as much as you feel like you should. Everyone's different, so. <clears throat> okay, we have another quick one here. What are your favorite non-landscape subjects? So, I like animals. I think boats are pretty cool for like watercolor paintings. I think boats would be pretty cool. You know, when I think of landscapes, I'm thinking naturalistic only, you know, mountains, rivers, stuff, stuff out in nature. So, I would say like boats, buildings, architecture, stuff like that, like non-landscape stuff and animals. So that's probably my favorite. Okay, here's an interesting one. I have periods where because of other commitments, I don't get any painting or drawing done for a while. So then I find it really hard to get going again. Have you experienced this? And if so, what's the best way to pick up the reins and get started again? Definitely experience this. I think everyone experiences this with everything in their life. Painting, drawing, anything, anything, work, doing the dishes, <laughs> cooking, like, of course. So I think the best way to just, you just gotta do it. You gotta do it. You gotta remember why you started. Why, what's your purpose? Why did, why did you start drawing in the first place or painting? What do you love about it? Find that love again, find that passion inside of you. I know it's there, so you gotta find it. Get some inspiration. Um, maybe you need a break. Maybe you take a break. Try to do something else, you know? get into music, get into some some other creative outlet or something, go for a walk, go get out in nature, start just thinking, maybe do some journaling, start writing out all your thoughts, figure out like, why are you stopping? What's going on? Why don't you have time for this? Why aren't you making time? You know, are you just so busy? You know, give yourself some time, do it on the weekend, you know, figure it out, figure something out, but uh, try to go back to your purpose. Is it something you love? Like if, you, if it's something you love, you want to keep that growing, you know? So, and make it a priority, but go back to your purpose. Okay, we got a funny one here, an interesting one. 
I only draw with one pencil. I really don't get why I need a 5G or a 2B. Well, there's no 5G pencil, that's Wi-Fi. Uh, what do the pencil numbers mean? Which one should I have and is it really worth it? Okay, well, is it really worth it? It's definitely worth it. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure your age, maybe you're younger, so maybe you feel like it's not worth it to have to, have to buy all these pencils. But you can just buy a set of pencils. Not that, it's like, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks, not a big deal. Uh, if you're in the US, not a big deal. It's okay if you only draw with one pencil. If you have a 2B, that's all you have, no big deal. That's, that's a great, really versatile pencil to use, a 2B. You know, you can get really light with it and you can go a little bit darker. That's, to me, that's, that's a well-rounded well pencil that you could have. The pencil numbers, so B means black, I believe, and H means hard. The harder the lead, the higher the number. So 6H is harder than a 2H. And with the B, a 6B is darker, more black than a 2B. So the higher the numbers, the harder they get, which is like kind of the lighter they get more dense the lead, it's just harder to write with. It'll really like cut into the paper basically, scrape into the paper, make a really hard dent. But it's also very light line. So the higher the H number, the lighter it gets. With the B, it gets darker and darker and softer. So if you really wanna get a wide range of values in your work, and that's something you're interested in, then you wanna get the higher number Bs that get really, really dark some H's that get really light for the sketching. But if you're not interested in that, particularly myself, I don't really, really like getting very dark values with graphite, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm kind of like you, I would just use like one or two pencils. Normally I would, I would draw with like a B and then shade with a 3B or something like that. Not a big deal. So yeah, if it's not worth it to you, then don't buy it. Okay, so here's a long one, but we'll try to get through it. Um, with so many areas to do within drawing and art, graphic design, drawing characters, animation, painting, etc., what's the best advice to maybe find the area that suits you, especially for any beginner artist? That's basically what they're asking. You know, they go into their details. I wouldn't worry about it too much, especially if you're a beginner. I think it's good to experiment with all different kinds of things. I, it'll, I think it'll eventually, you'll, you'll narrow yourself down. You know, for me, even over these last few years, I mean, I started out many, many years ago before I even thought I would get into painting full time. I was kind of focused on illustration and I was doing watercolor with pen and ink illustrations. I did that for like a year while in college. And then after college, I, I got into acrylics for like four years, five years. Then I got into oil painting for like three years, totally gave up on acrylics, totally gave up on watercolor. I went to oil painting. Then I, then I went back to watercolors for plein air sketches, got rid of oils. And that's where I'm at now. I do watercolors and then I do pen and ink sketches on toned paper. So it took me a while to narrow down what I want. And I think right now the stuff that I'm doing is what I really want to do uh, as far as I can tell. But so I think just keep going, keep going because each thing is going to help you with the other, you know, some stuff in painting and drawing can help you with the graphic design. The graphic design work can help you with the composition and stuff. It's all very valuable, you know. Don't, don't limit yourself in your career. Most careers, even I do graphic design, but with my job, I'm like the only design guy there. So I also do videography, photography, web design, uh, drawing, like ev everything, everything. So just because your job title is graphic design doesn't mean it's the only thing you're gonna do. So. It's good to know a little bit. It's good to know a little bit more. Keep playing around with it. Keep learning more things. You'll be more valuable the more you know. Okay, a quick one here. Strong emotions like love, grief, or others made you create an emotional art masterpiece. You know, there was a few years ago, I went through a breakup, pretty bad breakup. One of my first ones of a very serious relationship. And you know, I was, it's probably 10 years ago, you know, I was kind of young and um, I ended up creating a piece of art, an acrylic painting, that really helped me cope, I guess, and helped me move on, kind of. But uh, I didn't keep that one. Um, you know, I threw it away many years ago, but, uh, and it wasn't a masterpiece, but there was a lot of symbolism in it, and I used certain colors and stuff that really helped my mood and emotions and stuff. So, in that sense, I did use that, and I have done that in the past a few other times, but nothing too, you know, I think, I think sadness and like, you know, I usually in winter, I become very sad because of not seeing the sun for a while and it being cold. 
Um, that stuff really inspires me to paint a lot usually. So that kind of stuff helps as well. So I never really created a masterpiece, but I did let those emotions kind of guide me to create something that actually helped me in a way. All right, pretty uh, classic question here. What made you want to draw in the first place? And when did you start? So I started when I was like four or five, very young, very, very young. And uh, I think cartoons really inspired me. I think like Disney movies, cartoons. I think that thing really inspired me. I think my older sister as well. I kind of would, there was a lot of, you know, she was like three or four years older than me. And she would always do coloring books all the time. We had like Lion King coloring book and all kinds of different coloring books. She was always coloring and drawing. And I would always copy her a lot. So I think that kind of got me into drawing. And then my family really, kind of encouraged me to keep drawing. You know, they said, wow, that's really good, it looks good. You know, and I would just keep coloring, keep drawing. That's how I got into drawing. And uh, that's where I am now. All right, what is the biggest mistake you made while you were learning to make art and what did you learn from it? I think that's really tough, that's a very tough question. You know, I've made many, many mistakes, many mistakes. But I think the biggest one is just, you know, learning to deal with failure. Learning to just, any mistake I make, no matter what it is, just learn from it and not get so emotional over a failed drawing or a failed painting and just realize that it's just a drawing it's just a painting i can do it again i can make something better i can learn from it do something different but you know i think you know the main mistakes i make are like values or proportions stuff like that just simple stuff but no matter what kind of mistake it is for me it's it's just learning that don't let your emotions don't get so emotional over something you create. Like just move on to the next one, try to create something better. Yeah, that's all, that's what I try to do. Okay, I think we're getting close to the end here. What do you usually do when you just feel like not motivated or don't wanna draw anything? I didn't make any artwork in the last few weeks just because of this feeling, basically. Well, when I'm feeling not motivated nowadays, I usually do it anyway. I usually just draw anyway because you can choose to do something even if you don't feel motivated to do it. And that's something that I've learned recently in the last year. You know, you can just, and I made a video about this about recently about what to do when you're not feeling motivated. Do it anyway, don't let motivation control. Why are you letting motivation control what you do? If you know you like drawing, you obviously like drawing, you were doing it for some reason, what made you lose motivation? You know, you haven't made any art in the last few weeks. I'm sure that probably makes you feel down, you know, like, man, you want to create art, but you're just not feeling motivated. So you need to just sit down and do it. Just sit down and do it and uh, you'll feel better. Once you actually start getting into it, you know, once you get into the drawing, I usually feel better. And sometimes when I'm not motivated or I'm, I, I did a live stream a few weeks ago where I was actually really tired. I was just about to take a nap before the live stream. I ended up waking up and I was yawning and stuff in the live stream and it ended up being one of my good one of my best drawings. So you never know what you're gonna create. So just sit down and do it. Don't let motivation stop you from doing what you wanna do. All right, folks, we made it to the last question here. Uh, what do you do for living beside drawing? Okay, well, I think I've already answered this one. I do graphic design uh, for a healthcare company, small healthcare company. Uh, healthcare management company. So I've been doing that for like eight or nine years now. Eventually I'm looking to get out of that job and do art full time, do this YouTube thing, my art, you know, my own art business and really provide services to people for learning to draw, learning to paint with watercolors and uh, just help people, help people get better and do what they enjoy, do what they love. And uh, that's really my focus moving forward. So uh, that's what I do for a living right now besides my art. All right, well, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully this was a cool Q&A for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Should be reaching 600,000 subscribers soon, so maybe we'll do another one eventually. But uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.